Hi, I'm Don the Dragon Wilson, and you're watching Kickboxing Classics. The following video contains rare vintage footage of an historic kickboxing event. Each round remains in its original master shot format so that its visual veracity cannot be altered by editorial montage. Don the Dragon Wilson faces off against Fanta Petch Muangtrat in one of the early encounters between American and Thai kickboxers. Make no mistake about it, the official winner of this historic bout is knowable. This presentation will travel back to 1984 Hong Kong to shine a light on an urban legend that has festered for three decades about what actually happened in this fight. Sometime after the bout, the event promoter lost the video master. Yet mysteriously, snippets of the fight circulated principally throughout Asia without footage of the referee declaring the outcome. Then the rumor mill took over, leaving its outcome the subject of much debate. Coming into this bout, Don the Dragon has just won a 12-round decision over number one contender Dennis Alexio on NBC Network Television for the WKA Super Light Heavyweight World Title. Meanwhile, recent Rachadanarm Stadium champion Fanta Pechmoantrat has distinguished himself as a crowd pleaser in Europe through a series of victories over local contenders, including a knockout victory of Holland's future WKA World Champion Andre Brilliman. Now let's look at the tail of the tape for this Muay Thai matchup. Don Wilson's nickname, The Dragon, comes from the White Dragon Kung Fu style he studied. Fanta Pech Moantrot's legal name is actually Adipong Bois Ban. Like most Thai contenders, he fights under a pseudonym. Fanta refers to his corporate sponsor in Thailand, Fanta Soft Drinks. Pech Moantrot is a region of Thailand about 60 miles or 100 kilometers outside of Bangkok. Both men are influenced by boxing superstar Muhammad Ali. Wilson threw his media persona outside the ring and his stick and move tactics inside the ring. Fanta threw his charismatic clowning antics during the heat of battle. Wilson enjoys a 5.5 inch or 14 centimeter height advantage and outweighs Fanta by about 14 pounds or 6.5 kilograms. There were no weigh ins for this bout, so the weights are approximate as reported by their corners. Wilson's best advantage will come from keeping Fanta at bay and gradually picking him apart until he finds an opening for a bunches of punches knockout. Wilson's height and weight advantage will be important for Fanta too because he'll need to get inside to use his knees. So Fanta must try to wear down the dragon in the early rounds then counter fight his way into close range for clinch fighting during the later rounds. Wilson also has a six year maturity advantage although in terms of ring experience they are fairly even. Fanta started fighting at age 13. He has a much higher loss ratio than Wilson because he began so young on a sink or swim career path. The bout was sanctioned by the World Kickboxing Association under its rules for Thai boxing, which included seven rounds and a non-title bout. Kicks, punches, knees, and elbows are permitted, although there is no scoring advantage for classical technique from either Western or Muay Thai styles. Clinch fighting is allowed. No holding the ropes while striking, no groin attacks, no throws. Scoring uses three judges, 10 point must system, sweeps scored as body blows, they're not the same as knockdowns, and all rounds carry equal weight. The traditional tie system of scoring the first two rounds as a draw does not apply. Don the Dragon and his brother Jim Wilson are here to call the action. Round one. Mike. My fighting style was to start slow always. I'm a 12 round fighter. I mean, you know, this was only seven rounds. I, I, I didn't start off throwing anything that I thought was my big gun. I was just uh, picking away at it and trying to see uh, what I was in the ring with. This is the only Hong Kong event for Don Wilson in which his brother Jim is not in the corner. Uh, right there, you can see I actually scored with that round I was kicking. It's just it's kind of a. Almost like my old point fighting days, just kind of smacked him in the face a little bit. I didn't put much power in him. I just uh, wanted to see how he reacted. I, I didn't make this particular Side kick to the thigh by Wilson. By the way, that was a great kick. Don side kick him in the thigh. Now, now this was a great technique. Yeah, we, we can tell now watching it, but do you think you could have told then that the side kick was actually working? Well, I think so because he actually gives signals by trying to pretend it didn't bother him. So it kind of lets you know, oh, this, this scored and it's bombed. You know, otherwise, there'd be no reaction at all. And, and it also, you can see a stuff from dead in his track. 
Leg kick, a body leg shot, kick. left hook, elbow by right. Wilson. Yeah, I, I, it's obvious to me that this has to be a surprise to him how quick you are. Already he knows you're bigger and stronger. He probably just assumed I'd be really slow and that's where his advantage was. I wasn't quite as slow as what he thought. Well, here's the other thing. And, but the ties have already have already learned this. And you can tell from even this fight. Skipping low kick to the knee by Fanta. You, you really are not affected much by the leg kick. And all the other fights against Westerners, the ties concentrate on the leg kick. They just go to it, go to it, go to it. Even if they're losing a fight, they end up winning by getting that Western fighter to go down and quit due to leg kick. And, uh, so you, you never was a little stunned right there, too. Yeah, yeah. Double knees you by Wilson. So, yeah, he was a little slightly stunned. I mean, I can see it now. I mean, I didn't notice it then. My question to you is, if you would have noticed it then, and, and somebody would have told me, it would have changed my style of fighting. I would have been looked more, maybe gone more to the short right hook, maybe gone more to the to uh, to the body. Because well, I think the body shot. Th there he is again. I think that really hurt him a little bit. He, he looks like he loses his footing a little. Yeah, he's, he's a little awkward and clumsy here. I think right. He's trying Just, not to show that he's hurt. Right. But he's at the same okay. time not doing much. Side kick. Take that side kick. Side kick by yeah, Wilson. No side kick. What's this? <laughs> no, now this, of course, is an illegal throw. Well, any throw is illegal in child boxing. You don't throw. There's no throwing in well, this. Not like this. We're not fighting under any rules that allow these kind of throws. Compustat numbers from the first round. Wilson landed 45 of 53 strikes, of which 11 were power shots. Fanta connected with 8 of 19 and committed one foul. Basically a more active round for Wilson. Don, in his first outtake, Fanta gets thumped. Why is he raising his hands? I, know. I got him in the body. I, I got a body shot. Try to show he's not hurt. Right, that body shot right there. Hurt him. Total foul. This is not legal. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Knocks the referee over not too. Not somebody like that. Of course not. Round two from Hong Kong. In the previous round, Wilson established his sidekick. Well, I, I can see he's, he's not coming at you at all. And of course, that's not really good for your particular style. You no, know, I'm a counterfighter. I like it when guys come forward. I don't like it when they stand right in front of me and do nothing. The dragon's well, sidekick to the jaw he's jolts Fanta. He's obviously trying to say, well, he didn't hurt me. But, you know, the point's made, you kicked him in the face. So far in the fight, Wilson's connected with 10 kicks versus 5 for Fanta. Yeah, he's not sure what to do. He's trying to keep himself Left protected. Left hook by Wilson. He must need hit him again. Good hook. Good hook. I don't see what purpose is served by his theatrics. See, he's not throwing punches or kicks. No, no, which is not really good. You want him lunging. There he tried. But you blocked him up. You slipped the punch, you blocked the knee. Well, we're both we're going to the leg. I mean, he did uh, Wilson, land three solid like it. shots to my legs. Uh, I mean, I, I think that was probably the most effective thing he did was uh, land leg kicks. Up. And I think maybe my most effective was um, head kicks. Good, good, good. Or, excuse me, uh, head punches and body punches. That's In all your knee you're yeah, using, but it does land. You know what? It's not knees like they were used to seeing them. They do their knees by grabbing your head, holding you, and then kneeing you. I just threw it. Yeah. Just like I threw a, a punch or a kick elbow, or even yeah. an elbow. Leg kick I just let Fanta. it go. You know, I don't think I need to hold them to land it. Now, that was a, a that was knee and then a right hook. Yeah, both lands. And obviously the right hook stopped him dead in his tracks. He just stopped when it landed. And now he's backing up. Knocks the referee over. It's Another still, illegal uh, throw from Fanta. A throw that's illegal. It's odd that he's doing these throws, but I guess that's frustration. I don't really know why he did it. This, this, it didn't really help him. Knee to the See, body by Wilson. Me, I, just, I just stick it right in there. And I don't wait to hold him. I use it like a body shot. I think he was just trying to throw you and slow you down with the throws. Don't know if he was trying to slow me down or what, what he was thinking. Because I, I, I've never done that. I've never tried to... Oh, so that, 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 that scored also. Like, that, that must 
hurt himself. Now he, he did do a good kick combination there. I don't think they like it. Well, the leg kick. Right up to the body by Wilson. Wilson. I think he's a little stunned. Oh, look, look. Yes, he is stunned. He's just stunned. Look, that's why he's backing up. Yeah, he's stunned. Straight right. Uppercut. Oh, hook. Elbow smash. Well, I almost landed that up. But anyway, uh, you know, he was, his defense was getting in the shell, we call it, with the hands up, elbows in, and uh, chin down. And now he'd go to the body. Well, they're tough. All the ties are tough. The copy stats in round two find Wilson landing 37 of 45 strikes with 29 power shots. Fanta sticks to the traditional tie strategy of saving himself for the later rounds. He scored four of 18 strikes, plus another foul. He's not only throwing you down, he's knocking the referee down too. Now he did that several times. I really don't understand why he did it. Did not score, and it was not a legal technique. The term sacrifice throw gets its name because the thrower usually starts the technique by falling to the ground to gain momentum for tossing the opponent. A capacity crowd has turned out here at Queen Elizabeth Stadium for this east-west duel between two titans of the ring. Round three. It's a game, a game of chess. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him, trying to see what I can touch and what I can keep him from hitting uh, in the meantime. You want to be able to score without getting your target areas hit. At this point, he's not doing very much. No, no. no. He's, Whoa. He, he's... He's not sure what's going on now. I think he's a little curious. Oh, that, that, Wilson Psychic that stuns Fonta. Okay, well that's a knockdown. By rules, that's a knockdown. You know, he gets kicked, his knee's on the ground. And the referee's tie referee, he didn't call it. Between the rounds, Fonta's cornerman soaked him and the ring canvas with tons of water. You know, but he, he actually was up, you know, up against those ropes twice and looked like he landed two kicks. Skipping low kick, Fanta. I give that to him as a score right there, but sure. Every time he goes to the leg, that is a scoring area. It's like somebody hitting you in the face with a punch or a kick or, or the body, and that's a score. It's not really affecting my style, though. It's not oh, affecting Side kick to the ribs, side Wilson. Kick. Yeah, that's a score for me. But that's not the, the, round, the leg kick he wants to do. Solid the, side kick to the thigh by Wilson. Up. The leg kick he wants to use is kicking with his back leg, winding up in power. But you know, those, those kicks don't work on you either, and, you know, anybody who winds up a kick is not going to hit you. Power low kick by Fonta. Wants, yeah, but you know what, right? it's not doing him any good, he backs right up. He sees that. He lands that kick as good as you can land it, and he backs up. So returns the low kick. Now see, that has to have bothered him, or he's not acting. These guys are used to getting the kick in the leg. Fonta scores a low kick, but he's a right hook from Wilson. He's obviously being bothered. And I think your speed is bothering him greatly. You can't land a clean shot. You can't land a combination of any sort. The only thing he seems to be effectively landing is the, his lead leg roundhouse into my kneecap. <laughs> he does it on both sides. Fonta back at the rope. Behind the knee, in front of the knee. The dragon fire. So overhand left. I think right hook. Left hook to the body. Of course, of course. Of course. More play acting. You can watch. Dozens of tie fights, you don't see him do all that acting. And that's a slip on the water. Fanta helps Wilson up from the yeah, slip. They pour a lot of water on their fighters, and I, I slipped on some of that water. Well, I, I, you know, I, as a guy who works corners, I can see that as a strategy. Okay, Fanta. Kick Fanta. Around. He's more flat footed. It would affect you more than him. Having water in the ring. Closing moments of the round. Uppercut Wilson. Good uppercut. And he's showing that he got hit by it. Yeah, he's, uh, he always does the acting that it didn't hurt me. Left hook Wilson. But the point is made. What is this? That's Tamanagi, the judo circle throw. This is a first for me. I've never before seen a Thai boxer using a judo technique in Muay Thai. Again, Wilson dominates from the outside, landing 12 power shots, including a flash knockdown from a side kick to the head. Fanta fought back, scoring six leg kicks, but ended the round with another illegal throw. Good kick. Kick, and the knee touches the ground. Knee and the shin is on the ground. Anything other than your feet touch the ground, it's a knockdown. Yep. Yeah. And that's just him rolling backwards, he's pulling me again. Yeah, knocks the referee down, too. I don't know why he's hugging me, but uh, he acts like he's apologizing. Fourth round action. Fonte has never been beyond round five. Wilson has done so on 22 occasions. 
He's scoring there with the uh, lead leg into my knee. And not a lot of power in him, but there he is hitting my knee. It's a scoring area. What? He's using that technique. Yeah, he is scoring to the lead, lead leg. leg. Yeah, he's going to my right knee, the front and back. But like you said, there's not much scores. power in Kicks are kind of like just Low kick from Fanta. The most he avoided my wheels. power, I, th I don't think he made contact. I think I was able to get out of the way of the, the kicks. Good side. The dragon side yes. kick again the sends Fanta against the rope. That's a part of what's keeping him. Solid side kick to the body rocks Fanta. Yeah, I, I've landed in his leg. And, uh, and kicked him once in the head, and he went down. So he knows the sidekick can come with the leg, the body, and the head. Well, what he knows he can do without getting hurt is go <laughs> go for a low kick at my kneecap. And that's basically his most effective technique. Fanta appears more tentative. Right? I'm yes. not having any effect on you, but I know. No, no it's not going to affect my son fighting style, but it is a score. Well, he's count I know what he's counting on. He's counting on your leg getting side hurt. Sidekick, right and left hook Eventually. combo from Wilson. Brings he's it over and left from Fanta. Move around like this and counter him. Well, this fight is a seven-round fight, which to me Ooh, is... Ooh, Fanta reacts to explosive leg kick from Wilson. To him, it hurt. to him, a seven-round fight is a long fight. It's longer than he's used to. He's used to five-round fights. So yeah. he's a five-round fighter. I'm a 12-round fighter. So my style is little at a time. I, I fight a little at a time. I mean, you know, I, I would love to have had five more rounds in this fight. So his boxing skills were not uh, very well developed. He did not really throw combinations. He would just come in with one big straight left. That, that's the only punch he really threw. When you look like you might throw that sidekick. You were way. watching two exceptionally talented counterfighters who well understand well, defense. I know this. I, I, I think he was surprised that um, he wouldn't be able to just move inside and, and land his good stuff. Sure. And, and I, I can see right from the first round your speed. I, I think he knocked out six Europeans before this fight. So he must have, I can only think that he got inside them and then landed maybe that straight left. Low okay, kick, Fanta, knee strike, kick. right hook, Wilson. See that, that, that awkward looking knee of your scores. Yeah, he's not used to it because that's not the way they use the knee. Yeah, he's used to knees, but not somebody just jumping up throwing them. No, I know. Even that where I just did there. You his eyes don't clinch. lift their legs up in that way. They block the leg kicks. I just lifted it up so that it wouldn't, he wouldn't even touch me. So far in this fight, Wilson has scored 80 total punches against seven for Fanta. He was winding up then to do it again, and I just moved out of the way. See, the most effective thing he does is that little... Oh, left hook, Wilson. Right that hook, good yeah. left hook, looked like it hurt. And he once again makes the big mistake of yeah. acting like it doesn't hurt him, which also announces... That's, that actually means that it, it did, did get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, but it did hurt. When, when you have to act like it, it, he was trying to say, yeah, you hit me, but it didn't hurt. But usually what that means is it hurt. Uh, that doesn't really help you with experienced judges. The Dragon continues to breathe fire from long range in this round, landing 15 of 18 strikes versus 6 of 16 for Fanta. This is round 5. Fanta's never been past round 5. Yeah, we're both throwing hard things. You see how hard he's coming forward. He's now trying to knock me out. He's now thinks he's got my number. He knows what to do. Uh, that was a sweep. Leg Sweeps out. are not knockdowns in the WKA. Not a knockdown. Well, he's throwing hard leg kicks now, so he's going forward. You notice he's only coming forward. He is not backing up staring at me like before. Good hook, good hook. Fanta very aggressive now. But once he's again, just, once again he can't land. He's coming shot. forward though. Oh, good kick. Don't tell me Font is trying for another foul. Yeah, he's trying to, but the thing of it is, that's not, that's not legal. I know, I know, I know. And once again, he knocks the referee down, too. He should forget that. The referee is, I he's believe, apologizing telling him again. not to do it, telling him to well, stop. he came over and apologized for doing it. Not that that means anything. Oh, that was a good kick to the leg. This is traditionally the final round in my time. Yeah, but I think I slipped on that one. Else. Here's where I think Fonzie should take a chance and change it all up Here's by going in for some clinch fighting. Oh, he's going straight left. Yeah, he's all on me now. He's just going very aggressive. He's, he's really going out loud. Here he is trying to throw you again. He had a pretty good defense when he wanted to. If he wanted to avoid contact, he, he would either just stand good side up, kick. cover up. Strong side kick to the ribs, right hook to the chin by Wilson. Completely uh, in his shell, or he would back up. Huddled up like yeah, a truck. He, yeah, he's going all out, though. Good. He hit you right now, Fanta, Wilson, trade elbow shot. hit him with an elbow back. 
body shot. Oh, another knee by Font. He gets counter slammed hard to the body by Wilson. Good left foot. Good left foot. Because all of a sudden he's not quite as aggressive as he was before. I think the body shot. He's backing up a little bit. I think the body shot hurt him. I think it's obvious that it has changed completely. He's backing away. Oh yeah. He's, see, totally changed. It's too bad he didn't know he was hurt. All of a sudden, making now. like he's not getting hurt. Good kick. Good leg kick. Shouldn't use that more often. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, I think the body shot hurt him a little bit because all of a sudden he stopped being the aggressor and now he's backing up again. Look. Which is not what he was started. He started this round coming forward and then he and ends the round uh, a little less aggressive. Yeah. They are completely, completely different. Now he's really one to survive and not fight. 19 seconds remaining in the round. Yeah, he's moving away from me instead of coming after me. He's stepping now, he's trying to come. Oh, <laughs> he, he kicked you in the leg and almost knocked himself down. Well, that's got to be frustrating. Oh, good hook, good hook. Yeah, he, no. he just wanted to survive that round. Fonta gives Wilson a respectful tap with his glove after their dynamic exchange. Fanta answered the bell much more aggressive than earlier, scoring two sweeps, but also committing another illegal throw. Wilson took control mid-round after a bruising body punch. He scored 33 of 43 strikes, including 22 power shots. Fanta landed eight power shots. Let's look at slow motion of the first sweep. Fanta executes a perfect low kick sweep to Wilson's support leg. And here's the fourth foul by Fanta. It's the fourth time we go down to the ground for no reason. The referee is supposed to be deducting points by now. Meanwhile, Wilson closes the round by beating a low kick to the punch with a classic jab. At the very end, at the you very didn't know end. he was hurt. No, I did not. But I can see it easily here. He's when you change your whole style up uh, from being very aggressive to just well, that's definitely your round. Back out, you know. Don, what did you think of Fanta's throws? Did they bother you at all? never affected me. It would be almost be almost the same as if, you know, we don't count sweeps in the WKA as a knockdown. If you sweep the guy, it's not considered a knockdown. It's not a knockdown. So it's not a point getting thing. So it you know, I had a guy do that to me in a Waco fight in Italy. He swept me twice, but it did not score anything. It, so so you know it didn't It counts as a body punch, that's about all. Yeah, I didn't even look at I didn't even look at it as a body punch because body punch was hurt. <laughs> Sweeps don't do anything. You go go to the ground, you stand back up, you start again. Um, yeah, it yeah. did not really affect my fight, but it, it was kind of a ridiculous thing for a TIE fighter who knows the rules to be, you know, if I did it, it would be more understanding that I didn't realize that it wasn't legal. But, you know. Do you think, well, then that was obviously a strategy. What do you think he was trying to accomplish with the throws? Uh, disrupt his breathing would be my guess. Disrupt his fighting style. Get him out of the rhythm. Change things. You know, that's what I, that that would be my opinion. Um, and he's frustrated. He's frustrated because he can't really do the clinch and knee. Yeah, that's what he, he didn't know what to he's do when he grabbed. So he's really swinging the ground. Yeah. Can't get what he wants. Sixth round action, Queen Elizabeth Stadium, Hong Kong. The sixth round is new territory for most Thai kickboxers. If I'm not paying attention and I get near this corner, um, it gets slippery. A lot of water on the ground. That whole area was slippery. Font has never gone past five rounds. He was down for a flash in round three. You, you see his whole demeanor has changed. Now he's coming forward. He's not backing up. He's not up against the ropes waiting on me. He's uh, and I'm Body shot. Left touch. hook by Wilson hook, breaks think, through. Uh, it's pretty solid on him. Um, we're both throwing heavier leather. I mean, oh, Fanta Hammer's left. a straight left. He's totally all out right now to try, try to come forward now. I turn southpaw, he backs up. Obviously, I must have done some damage either with his legs or to his body, or maybe that knockdown to his, his head. But he does not like the side, southpaw stance. Yes, I'm back on the Side kick to the Good body. Side, side kick Good to the leg, leg by Wilson. These two counterfighters are now looking for that one big shot that will break it all over. He's acknowledging again. Yeah, he's not coming in. Look. He was coming all oh, in before. Yeah, no, it's also by trying to think like it hit him, but it didn't hurt. Good hook, by the way. Look, see how how wet that floor is. The referee slipped it. Yeah. Dragon touches gloves with the referee. So I think that's and with a tactic by his corner. I don't know. There's, it's all wet right there. Where he's standing right now, where he's trying to bring me in there, it's just so. You see, you can, I think sure, he almost. Straight right by Wilson. Yeah, but the referee almost slipped twice, standing there, and that's right where I slipped. Sure. Yeah, because. They would like to prevent all this movement. 
Two superb fighters here. Okay, that was uh, a low kick to the groin. That's what the seems acknowledging that it was accidental. Head kick, Wilson. Head ahead again, just to kind of remind him that I could do the side kick. Right hook again by Wilson. Legs. Fanta needs to do something different. And you notice he crowded me and then tried the, the left. I mean, that, that was the big gun as far as punching. He was just trying to uh, land a straight left. He's complaining he thought I went too low to the groin. One minute left in the round. Seems like he's uh, just wanting not left to get hook hit by Wilson. just land the left. I mean, there's no jab. I don't think he's throwing a jab. Uh, not much of a right hook. I mean, he just stays in front of me, tries to avoid contact, and he jumps in with the left. It's not the kind of thing that I'm going to get hit by often. Well, it looks like he's controlling everything. The distance, the scoring. Straight left by Fonta. Left by Has no effect. But of course, you know, I've seen this done several times. I don't, I don't times. think, I don't think uh, no, I don't think they're having an effect yet. I'm just saying, we call it a good left just because he throws it and it, and it, and it lands. But there's no reaction. There's no, I'm not like stunned. I don't start running from him. Nothing. Uh, when I land one, he kind of buckles a little bit and starts backing up. I, I think mine actually did have some effect on him. Some of the body shots. Well, I think you've literally stunned him several yeah. times. A more plotting round six, but with heavier leather from both men. CompuStat numbers again show Wilson on top, landing 16 of 28 strikes, including 10 power shots. Fanta urgently hunted for that one big blow to turn things around and came up with four power shots of his own. Seventh round starting. WKA Muay Thai kickboxing. Surprisingly for some perhaps, Fanta has been fighting defensively. Last round of the fight. These are the rounds. The last round is the one the ties usually come all out. Side for kick. Knockout. That's the last chance. Right hook. Wilson. Don't, they don't want to leave it to a decision. Usually they go for the knockout. But you, of course, are obviously ahead. Fanta well, rushes desperately ahead, at Wilson. So, but you never can tell. This is generally the strategy would be just no. Don't get knocked out. Fanta's never before gone past round five. He's still scoring with the low kick to the knee. Yeah, but it's not much. It's not much. Well, it's not going to stop. And it's having no effect. No, it's not going to stop me in the last round. I think he knows that at this point, but it's just the only thing he really can consistently land. Now, I am throwing punches, and I'm kind of getting them in a little bit. Now, this entire ref said something to him. I have no idea what he said to him. Round kick, Fanta. Well, he says things. Uh, he's, just, he's speaking a different language. I, I don't know what he's saying. Round kick, straight left, Wilson. Yeah, straight left. I think I am scoring a little bit here with the hands, but he is still hitting the knee. He's still kicking me. I'm landing these little jabs. I'm right in front of him. I mean, if you know, if he wants to mix it up, I'm right there. I mean, round kick to the neck by Fanta. Shrugged off by Wilson. As aggressive as he, I, I think he should be. No, he should be doing going all. Yeah, he should be jumping. He should be definitely not. And um, you know, I can. I don't really know why. See why the crowd is not getting what they want. No, they're not getting the money for it. He's not really trying. He's not really trying. It's like right hook Wilson. You of course are just outpointing him. Wilson peppers him with punches from outside. He doesn't know what else to do. Whoa! Fonda throws it over and left. You know that almost looks like that, that straight left hit land ball. Like yeah. I was backing up. Like I, like I, I fell back. Grabbing the ropes is a foul. I'm, I'm still right in there. Well, the whole point is he can't hurt you and he can't outpoint you. So you really cannot. That's not my lockdown because I didn't throw a technique. Basically, he just threw a technique and slipped. Good side kick. 49 seconds left. Time's running out for Fanta. Yeah, he can't hurt you. He can't even hurt you to live. Yeah, I think so that's he's got really nothing. Dragon shrugs off another good. round kick. Yeah, there's... You know, listen, the only reason Samad was able to get to you at all is because you were dehydrated, exhausted, clenched his pop in If you were moving like, like this, he'd never be able to do it either. Strike kick to the ribs I by Wilson. Yeah, I think that hurt. Look at him. He's, now he's backing up. Now, they don't back up <laughs> like that in the last round. Unless he, he got hurt to the body a little bit. I think that one hurt him. Oh, yeah. And now, look, all his aggression has is, is been halved. 12 seconds left. And now he's backing up. See, he's been coming forward until the body shot. Regardless, uh... Fanta looking to land the haymaker. I think I won the last round. Uh, I, I, I shot happy. 
Another tough round for Fonta. He stayed largely at long range, quickly jumping in with multiple Hail Mary attempted shots, landing six of 15 attempts, but also committing a fifth foul. Meanwhile, Wilson hammered home 46 strikes, including 17 of 21 power shots. Let's look at some of the round action in slow motion. That leg kick followed by a shoving right jab against your chest is what has you off balance and moving backwards. Actually, that hand didn't actually land on me. That's why I wasn't stunned by it. Did you see that? I, I kind of like go back into the ropes. Yes, clearly. But also, he's fouling you. He does. Yeah. He throws a knee while, he's out, while he has his hands on the rope. I have you winning that round, but it's a close round. Yeah, but I have you winning it also because the only person hurt in that round was him. Okay, well I won. I, I won the last round. At the time of this fight, the Star System World Ratings were the official ranking source for the World Kickboxing Association. The very next day, WKA President Howard Hansen personally phoned me with the official results which were then reported contemporaneously in the United States inside two separate issues of official karate magazine. Russell Choi of Happy Day Association, the event promoter, then followed up with an official certification. For this presentation, Mr. Choi has provided this duplicate certification. He confirms that Don Wilson won a unanimous seven-round decision over Fanta Pech Moandrat. Wilson also won each of the four other bouts promoted in Hong Kong by Happy Day Association. However, in the heavily edited snippets of this bout that have been circulated over the years, footage of the referee declaring a winner has been replaced by Wilson's post-fight speech in which he praised both Fanta Pech Moantrat and the TIE fighters in general. That speech has emboldened some to assert that either Wilson lost the decision or that the bout ended in a no-decision draw. No-decision bouts are unknown to most Americans. They are the remnant of London prize ring rules for bare-knuckle boxing. In the bare knuckle era, some champions would only put their title at stake in competitive bouts without judges. In that way, he could lose his title only by knockout. Otherwise, the bout ended in no decision, and the reigning champion would retain the title. No decision bouts were replaced in the United States by non-title bouts beginning in 1920 when New York State Senator and later New York City Mayor Jimmy J. Walker passed the Walker Law that established the first athletic commission to regulate ring competition. For this accomplishment, Walker was honored as the first non-boxer to appear on the cover of the Ring Magazine, as well as an inductee into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Although no decision bouts are still used in the Orient, especially in relation to gambling stakes, the WKA strictly prohibited that outcome owing to that sanctioning body's need to curry favor with American athletic commissions. No decisions are not in the WK rulebook. This image is a single frame from the existing Wilson Fanta footage that shows one of the judges' tables. According to the promoter's records, the judges for this bout were Lee Kam Wa, Danny Lao Don, a popular Hong Kong martial arts film and TV actor, and Alex Tsui Kakit, a Muay Thai instructor and chairman of the Hong Kong Boxing Association. Meanwhile, in the 1980s, the WKA had a procedure for arbitrating protests concerning major bouts involving a WKA world title or a WKA world champion. An impartial board of review of senior officials would rescore the bout from a full video copy without voiceover commentary. Because this bout has remained controversial for so many years, as the recognized WK ratings commissioner in 1984, the Star System founders unofficially convened an international review panel of WKA qualified judges at the time of that bout. Review judge number one is Steve Shepard of the United States who trained out of Angelo Dundee's famous Fifth Street Gym in Miami. A WKA, PKA, ISKA and star world champion and kickboxing hall of famer, Steve was the first reigning middleweight champion to defeat a reigning heavyweight world champion. He also outpointed Don Wilson early in their careers. Steve scored this bout 70 to 62 for Wilson. This guy, uh, Fanta, played a defense throughout. A couple of close rounds, but I, I gave them all to Don. Uh, I had him uh, winning every round because uh, he, he was making the fight.
The other guy, Fanta, was uh, reacting to Don. He very rarely uh, initiated the action. I didn't see Don get hit uh, but a few times and uh, didn't look like it had any effect whatsoever. The uh, throws are typically fighters might do that out of some frustration. Clearly, he was frustrated from the beginning. Uh, he, he couldn't handle Don, obviously. I, I mean throughout the fight. Well, the hugging means he's sucking up to Don because he's afraid, seriously. And uh, uh, he he was, you know, playing to the uh, crowd, uh, I think, out of embarrassment. I've seen that a lot. And he's embarrassed. He's in front of his home crowd. At the very least, he's in the Orient and Don is from here. Uh, but I think he felt at home. And, uh, I mean, you notice that Don was serious uh, throughout the fight. It was easy. Review judge number two is Fred the Gladiator Warriors of Netherlands, one of Rob Common's stablemates at Jan Plas's Majuro Gym in Amsterdam. A WKA Box Francais Savat and Star World Champion in Kickboxing Hall of Famer, Fred served as the WK Director of European Operations between 1984 to 1989. He also won seven Muay Thai bouts, including the Netherlands Muay Thai Championship. Fred scored the bout 67 to 67, a draw. In his written comments, Fred explains that he disregarded the fouls and the knockdown in round three because the referee did not call them. Moreover, in Fred's words, Wilson scored a lot in the first three rounds, even though Fanta was doing all kinds of theatrical stuff. Fanta did this just because he was hit by Wilson. But Wilson let the action slip away in the latter part of the fight. He neglected to score solidly while backpedaling in the last three rounds. Hence, my scores. Review judge number three is Sugarfoot Peter Cunningham of Canada, who trained out of Robert Supine Sr.'s dojo in Edmonton, as well as out of Benny Arquitas' Jet Center in Los Angeles. A WKA, Kick, IMF, and Star World Champion and Kickboxing Hall of Famer, Pete also had seven Muay Thai bouts against stadium champions without a loss. He even won the International Muay Thai Federation Junior Welterweight World Championship. Pete scored the bout 70 to 63 for Don Wilson. Great fight. I like the fight. I um, especially like Don's, uh, the way Don fought the fight and the way he handled the fight. Um, Thai opponents have fought Thai opponents, and anyone who's fought a Thai opponent know that when you get in there with a Thai fighter, you fight it. End of story. There's no ifs, ands, buts, or maybes. Now, you can go about it one or two ways. You can try and lock horns and go for it and hope for the best, um, or you can fight your fight. Have you the ability to stick and move and to fight a finesse fight against, you know, a strong, tough, solid Thai opponent, then all the power to you. And... Most guys, you know, sorry to say, don't have that ability, they have those skills. Donna Dragon Wilson has those skills. What did you think of all those illegal throws Fanta was using? Why was he doing that? Guess what, that's, that's something else too, because I, I was written into the contract. Don't do any throws or, or don't do any judo. Tires don't like that, they tell me. But here I am watching Donnie's fights, and I'm supposed to credit this guy for doing throws? In this fight, with Don and, and his Thai opponent, there was supposed to be no throws. You still take downs like that. Yeah, WKA boxing. rules and Thai boxing rules mesh together. Right. So, um, you know, how was that allowed, is what I'm saying? Or, how can he even give you points for an illegal move? He sent me no low blows, but every time a guy hits me, you know, low, you give him points for it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, my, my take on the throwdowns, or the takedowns, um, I dismissed them all. Told it myself when he would, you know, he threw down, down. Oh, sorry, man, pick him back up, you know, and and um, his wish for no hard feelings and just I'm just fighting my fight. Why was he hugging Don after he would help him up from the ground? He'd throw him down and help him up and then he'd hug him. What was that about? I got to that's tie. I got to tell you something. The toughest guys, but also they could be the most um, the nicest guys as well, you know. Really? So, yeah, I think, I think that's Thai cultural. Culture, yeah, I think it's cultural. And what about all that uh, play acting where he's pretending, you know, we'd get hit and then he'd really over -amp. What's that about? So when Donnie would hit him and he'd go, oh, good shot, or oh, look, oh, you got me. Yeah. Guess what, man? That's smart. <laughs> if you ask me, I've been hit before and I've done it. I've watched some of the top fighters, Sheree, Ali used to do it all the time. We know in Fridge hit Ali, he felt it. But he's kind of comic, oh, he got me. And then you think, oh, man, he's kind of, I didn't get him. You got him. You know what I'm saying? But it's a way of, of I don't know, second out your opponent. You know what I'm saying? Second out your opponent. You, uh, 
it's a, it's, it's fighting we know is not just physical. It's just a good little fight, playing my voice part, and it was cool. So, um, watching this fight, like I said, I was, uh, he was entertaining. It was all get up. Both guys were game. The tie punt, you know, a lot of bravado, but Donnie the Dragon, a lot of bravado as well. Um, and uh, I, I got to tell you something. I, I saw a shutout in Don's favor uh, to be even more, um, uh, I can say, uh, unbiased about everything. I gave the tie opponent a round, a draw, when they drew a round between him and Don. A very sticky round, maybe they kind of clenched up a, a couple of times. He got hits in, Don got hits in. I thought, you know what? I could call maybe one round even. Other than that, I saw a shutout and I saw even 10 8 round in Don's favor. And um, that, that's my call, really. The consensus opinion of our expert review panel also found that the Thai referee failed to call the knockdown in round three and that he failed to deduct points after issuing a warning for fouls. In conclusion, therefore, the original outcome was correct. Don Wilson won a seven-round decision over Fanta Pech Moantrot under the WK rules for Thai boxing. The opinions of the original judges and the expert review judges are also borne out by the final CompuStat numbers. Wilson dominated the overall fight in every category. CompuStats are calculated by slowing down the video and counting both strikes attempted and scored for each fighter. I watch the fight now, uh, many years later, and I still think I won that fight. The justification for all the controversy surrounding this fight comes from the post-fight speech you made to the crowd. Why did you address the crowd? Well, I gave the speech at the end because, I, you know, as a publicity move, they wanted to say um, that this was potentially my last fight overseas, which it was not. I fought many fights overseas after that fight. I was just the... Um, uh, kind of a pre-publicity spin is that this will be the last chance you get to see me fight in Hong Kong. People of Hong Kong, I want to say something. Uh, you all, I have the greatest respect for the Thais. I think the Thais are the greatest fighters in the world. But, but I want to say something. I was going to retire tonight. This was going to be my last fight overseas. But I'm not going to retire on that poor performance. I apologize. Uh, we'll either fight again or I'll do a better performance next time. Thank you, Hong Kong. Thank you. I didn't think my performance was poor. I just thought it was a promotional thing to say that I would come back and we'd have a rematch because I thought, you know, seven round fight, it was close. And uh, the crowd, a lot of members of the crowd didn't like the fight because actually there was gambling going on. And they did, did, they, maybe they gambled, I'd knock him out or he'd knock me out. Since it didn't happen, they were, they were mad. So, you know, they always want to knock out. Yeah, they always want super aggressive fighting. But um, actually, I thought I think Adepon Fontal fought a great fight. Uh, I thought I, I definitely won when I watched the fight. I don't think I lost the fight. I don't think he did what some of the rumored YouTube uh, statements are that I that I was knocked down or or beaten up in the fight. I mean, it's that that would be ridiculous. But I was announced the winner of the fight, and um, you know, I was never offered to fight with a tie again. That was the last time I was offered one. And uh, most people understand that. Most people who understand the the mentality of a promoter or of the fight game is, if you believe you've got a fighter that can beat another fighter, you offer the fighter a fight. And, and I never got another fight offered to fight a tie. And because of that, I tell people, well, that's why I never fought any more ties. And there were no rematches with Samad or Fanta or anybody because nobody offered me one. Uh, everybody who knows me knows that if I got offered that fight tonight, I'd fight. So why would I not fight somebody in the 80s and the 90s when, when I was in my prime uh, if I would fight today? You know, if, of course, the money would have to be right. It takes a little more money than what I used to fight for. An invitation was extended to Adepong Boaban to add his reflections and commentary to this presentation. He declined. Most sports fans in the West, especially in the United States, who view this complete fight have a difficult time understanding why there ever was any controversy. The outcome seems straightforward and the decision appropriate. Of course, whenever a fight is physically close, every country will exhibit its share of hardcore sports enthusiasts who think that the hometown guy should have won. And in all fairness, it should be pointed out that to Thai fans, the WKA orchestrated something both bold and perhaps presumptuous with this fight. 
In 1984, America's California headquartered World Kickboxing Association was frankly not interested in Muay Thai. They could not put competition under those rules on U.S. National Network Television, which was the WKA's greatest source of potential revenue. The WKA rules for Thai boxing were established as an afterthought at the urging of WKA promoters in Asia who needed to feature some Muay Thai bouts on their local event cards. Wilson Fanta was only the second Muay Thai event ever sanctioned by the WKA. But with this bout, the WKA imposed some rule modifications on a sport that otherwise had been formally codified in Thailand since 1925. Under stadium rules, scoring follows a mixture of ancient Muay Thai tradition and Marcus of Queensbury boxing from that time. During the Roaring Twenties, professional boxing was scored principally based upon clean power shots landed. That primary consideration remains a priority for judges even today. Over the years, however, in the West, iconic boxing champions like the Fighting Marine Gene Tunney, Will of the Wisp Willie Pep, Sugar Ray Robinson, and the greatest Muhammad Ali changed the focus of scoring from power shots to overall effectiveness. Power shots still count most, but an accumulation of non-power shots landed are now also accorded weight by the judges. WK Arena judges were often boxing judges and similarly adhered to that principle. Thai stadium judges agree with this approach. However, they remain reluctant to recognize non-power shots, such as karate kicks, prodding punches, or even Wilson's trademark sidekick that do not belong within the repertory of classic Muay Thai. In contrast, WKA judges recognized any striking technique that hit and hurt. Consequently, to stadium judges, a fighter who moves forward aggressively will be accorded preference in the scoring over a retreating fighter. And if the retreating fighter fails to employ Muay Thai strikes, land sharp power shots, maintain his balance before and after a strike, or control the action, he may even be penalized for evading contact. To WKA judges, in contrast, an aggressive fighter would not score if that aggression were not effective. And the retreating fighter, who more effectively utilized stick and move tactics, would win those exchanges, regardless of the technique deployed. In particular, stick and move tactics often require the fighter to deliberately lose his balance after scoring into his backpedaling footwork, a technique that would score with WKA judges, but not with Bangkok Stadium judges. Under stadium rules at the time, groin strikes were legal. The WKA prohibited all groin strikes. Under Bangkok Stadium rules, Muay Thai bouts never exceeded five rounds. The WKA scheduled Wilson Fanta for seven rounds, consistent with its rules for non-title contender bouts. Finally, stadium judges regard five-round Muay Thai bouts as similar to running a marathon. More weight is given to the later rounds. Unless there is a knockdown, the first two rounds are usually scored even. The final round may carry the greatest weight toward a decision that presumably takes the entire fight into consideration. But to WKA judges, who routinely scored 12 round title bouts, a five round fight is not a marathon. All rounds carry equal weight on their scorecards. Scoring early rounds as even would be neither practical nor even handed for professional bouts in which fighters must strategically pace themselves over a much greater number of scheduled rounds. In short, to Thai fans, this bout was roughly equivalent to the Canadian Football League pitting this year's Grey Cup championship team against a previous year's NFL Super Bowl champion in a game held in Paris under Canadian rules but administered by French officials. Imagine that the Canadian team won in part because of a few unorthodox rulings from French officials. From that analogy, most sports fans should be able to appreciate why some Thai fans have disputed the outcome of the Wilson Fanta bout for three decades. Putting it another way, to Thai fans, how could Wilson win a Muay Thai decision when he didn't use Muay Thai technique? And to Western fans, that's irrelevant. Wilson hit more often and was more effective. That's all that matters. Who cares what striking technique he used? Wilson won. Although the official outcome of this bout is both fair and conclusive, for traditional Thai fans, the dispute will doubtless continue. Tom, this was really a pretty easy victory for you. Why did you want to fight this contender from a lighter weight division? I can guarantee I never heard his name until they asked me to fight him. The reason why Fontal was picked, by not by me, but, but, but 
by the Thai promoter, the matchmaker that was working with the Chinese promoters, uh, is that he had fought six Western Europeans and beaten all six. This is a guy they thought could figure out the Western, my, my style, I guess it's considered a Western style, but it really wasn't. As a fighter, what did you think of Fanta, whose real name was Adipong Boban? You know, I respected Adipong as a fighter um, when I fought him, and even more now that I, I, I watch him and I see how competitive the fight was, even though there was a weight disadvantage. Now, there, you know, when there's a weight disadvantage, there's also some advantages. He was faster than most of the guys I fought. So he had the speed advantage. The other thing is this. You, nobody even seems to, you know, pay much attention to the fact that I fought under Thai rules, I believe, totally, I think, three times. Maybe four, but, like, modified. Like, there were no elbows allowed, you know. Uh, total Thai rules, I fought three times. I'm positive I fought three times. Now, he had fought under these rules, gosh, I don't know how many times, but his whole career. That's the way he fought under Thai rules. And then Samad also, over a hundred pro fights under those rules. So, you know, you, anybody knows when you change the rules of any sport, especially when you say you can hold the head, you can use elbows, you can use knees, when you change major portions of a sport, it, it's very difficult to adapt. And my very next fight, I had to fight Johnny Terrio under full contact rules, which is only kicks above the waist. No knees, no elbows. Uh, no leg kicks, uh, no holding the head. I mean, totally different rules. So I, in, during my career, especially in 1984, I fought Dennis Alexio on NBC Sports World under WKA rules. I fought Adipon Fanta under complete Muay Thai rules. I fought um, Johnny Terrio under full contact karate or PKA style waist up rules. And I boxed one I fought a heavyweight boxer under boxing rules. So I fought one of each major style of fighting all in 1984. And that's why I think Black Belt Magazine um, voted me as the Fighter of the Year, Full Contact Martial Arts Fighter of the Year in 1984. And that was, in my opinion, considered the peak of my athletic career was 84. You know, you know, this is the fourth, this is one of four stadium champions that Don fought. And I think only one of the rule, one of the times were they not allowed to use knees and elbows? You know, and that was would be the first Sonoy fight, which is a great fight, by the way. Yeah, JD fight. It was a great fight. I mean, that was a that was a war. They both went all out from the first second of the first round to the last second of the last round. Now JD was Don size. He may have been one inch shorter, and he was he weighed the same. You know, within one to two pounds, and and that's a plus for Don. Nobody talks about that. Do you notice that? I mean, when when there's, there's any any um, uh, talk about me not fighting Kaiser Tyson, they, they say, oh yeah, you fought the Tyson, but they were much smaller, smaller than you. Well, but what about the one that I fought? I, look, first of all, Thailand is just a country. I don't fight countries. I fight individual human beings. And it doesn't matter to me if they're white, black, yellow, red, whatever color they are. It, it doesn't matter to me. They're just a human being in the ring. So when people start saying things like, well, if Don fought a Thai fighter, well, there's some Thai fighters right here. You know, all the things they say about, oh, his sidekick wouldn't work, and I, I asked these guys if it worked. Yeah. I think it did. As a matter of fact, if I think if I had 50 Thai fights like this guy, I would be really landing some stuff on him, because I had, we were figuring now three, four tops under these rules. Give me 30 or 40 fights under these rules, and what do you think I'd be doing? Oh yeah, that's my that's my um, final analysis of me fighting under that set of rules. Plus, because of your style, the smaller, quicker guys actually cre it creates a problem. It's a little di more difficult for a fighter like Don, who's a counter fighter, right, and relies on speed to get a good counter on. Uh, for instance, Fanta, great fighter, I think he's great. But if he was to fight Bronco Sikatik, Bronco would just knock him right, walk right through him, and knock him right out. Right. And Bronco has fought ties and knocked him right out. Okay, Even guys who are out pointing him, it doesn't matter. Bronco's going to hit you, you're going to go out. And that's what he's going to end up doing. But for Don, all that power and everything, Bronco's a bigger guy than Don, you know, Don's going to counter him. And now Don can hit him hard and clean. Which is why he had so much success against great big champions like Maurice Smith, Demetrius Edwards, James Waring, Bronco Sikatek, Dennis Alexio. You know, guys who other people couldn't beat at all. Whereas smaller, quick guys, it's difficult. You know, it's more difficult. So that, you know, their size, 
people can make an excuse about the size, well, no, no. but that actually is also a plus yeah, for them. Styles make the fight, and I have a certain kind of fighter that my style fits for, and it's not smaller, faster guys. It's Oak Tree Edwards. Right. It's, but of course, now if this was a 12 round fight, I could reevaluate everything then. I would then say, um, you know, their advantage, every round that goes yeah, is of the right. Because the size is where. Because it will, uh, you know, I will get to them in 12. What about the low kicks to the legs? Do the leg kicks bother you at all? Oh, the leg kicks have never bothered me, ever. I've never been. I can't say I haven't been hurt by the leg kicks because they hurt me just like everybody else. I got nerves in my legs, but you know, it's just it's not a pain that <laughs> would, would ever cause me to affect my fighting style one iota. And I, I, part of that might be now I don't know this for a fact, but I played football in high school and college, and my position was middle linebacker and fullback. Now as a fullback, I only got the ball in third and short yardage, which means you know, I'm going to go right up the middle of the field, and I got clipped by people on both sides. Tackles and guards, which are you know 250, 270 pound men. So I I got I can remember many times pulling off my football pants and having huge bruises up and down my legs. So I got clipped many times on both sides of my legs by many by football helmets, shoulder pads, you know the guys running full speed for 20 yards and slamming into your kneecaps. Um, yeah, I, I took a lot of pain below the waist in American football. And it prepared me to sustain pain below my waist when I fought the Thai boxers. If, if I was sensitive to pain in my legs, the leg kicks would have affected me. But I think there is no deadening of my nerves. Any football player would tell you, every time you get hit, it still hurts. But you psychologically accept it. When the bell rang and I knew there were leg kicks allowed, I was already psychologically prepared to be pa have re receive pain below my waist. And I believe Americans who go overseas in those days, in the 80s, who were not prepared for pain below their waist, those were the ones that couldn't deal with the leg kicks. Leg kicks hurt me, and I remember Benny Akita saying, they hurt him, because people say, how is it the leg kicks don't hurt you? No, they hurt, but they don't affect your fight st fighting style. And that's the difference. Anyway, that's, uh, and even more tough. So when there's real knockouts, it's left to the eye of the viewer, and the viewers can decide what they think is the most effective, you know, uh, of course, if the viewers need to look at the rules, they can go by the rules because otherwise you, you, you're judging it by your own set of rules. And we don't fight by our own set. I fought by it under a certain guidelines uh, for rules, and so did Ada Ponfanta. And so as a viewer, when you judge it, don't judge it by anything other than the rules that we agreed to fight under. It's all been downhill since then, Paul. <laughs> Came out to LA, started getting drunk with Chris Penn. I would go. Wait a minute, can't put this on tape. No, I would. My friends were Chris Penn. My friends were Chris Penn, Charlie Sheen, 